Get a little bit of. Okay. Can you guys talk for me really quick? Out now, brown cow. What's that, dude? What's up, dude? Okay, you guys ready? Ready? It's the Waiver Wire episode. Waiver Wire. Who should I get? Should I get this running back? Oh my God. What about this tight end? He looks kind of good. No, he sucks. So get this quarterback because it's the Waiver Wire episode. Waiver Wire. Oh my God. Oh my God. Today we're doing a Waiver Wire episode. Oh my. It's so interesting. Uh, before we start, because usually people don't listen to the entire thing, I've realized, is. Go on iTunes, give us a rate, please, please, please. Give us a little subscribe on the podcast app. It helps out a lot <clears throat> on the Stitcher app, wherever you use to listen to your podcast. Um, but that's it really quick. I want to get that out there. Next, let's just jump right into what we want to talk about, which is who to pick up. We want to start out with the quarterbacks that you guys are seeing. Tyler, what do you what do you think? Oh, yeah. So I'll oh, click your pen really quick for me. <laughs> Thank you. Just got to okay, make sure it sounds good. on. I'm back. <laughs> Tyler's in the hood. I'm in the hood. Anthony is not. So I'm chilling if, in my tank. Like, if there's a quarterback that I, I like, <laughs> I think maybe, <laughs> like, ja- uh, maybe like Jameis Winston, because I, I think he's, he's coming back, right? Like, he's not suspended anymore. <laughs> and, like, that offense is kind of good. And I think he's available on, like, like 80% of the waiver. Work, so. Uh, what do you, what do you See, think, Mike? I told you my my impression. Was your good. voice, your 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 impersonations are dead on, Mike. Yeah, I was on it. That's pretty legit. If that's what you should actually do. That be an impersonator. Impersonator. <laughs> that's a thing. I don't know. I just made it up. <laughs> I think it is though. Maybe. Okay, let's talk. About so Jameis Winston. <laughs> that's I'll, who I'd probably go pick up. I like him. He's gonna get a W. That's a W. <laughs> Yeah, you ever see that video. <laughs> he's eating his fingers. He's so, he's so country. He's like him, he's Winston. Like, yeah, yeah. He's, so, Have you seen he's like that? southern country. He's, he's out of the country. <laughs> All right, yeah. So Jameis Winston. I mean, just look at what Fitz did for those first couple of weeks. He was the QB one. Uh, the Fitzpatrick died down. He turned into Fitzpatrick. That game against Chicago, they yanked him. They put in Jameis. You know, this is all this controversy. You know. It was, who is it going to be, Fitzpatrick or Jameis, once he comes back? I think Fitzpatrick made that decision pretty easy for the coaches, uh, you know, doing they as bad as he were, did. So They probably were pretty thankful that he did that. Yeah. But, I mean, coming back, I think he's uh, – uh, let's see real quick. They're playing the Falcons. It's a good matchup. It's a money matchup. It's a money matchup. The Falcons defense, they can't stop anyone. Uh, they're in Atlanta. But, I mean, even then, you know, it's like this, this should be a shootout. Like, this is probably going to be the highest over under the game of the week. So, I mean, yeah, if you're looking for a quarterback or you, maybe you stream with someone, maybe you got Breeze on a bye, some of these other quarterbacks on a bye, you need to grab a quarterback. Winston's a guy who's out there, you know what I'm saying? Would I necessarily spend, like, a high waiver claim on him or a lot of fab? Not necessarily, but, you know, once the waivers go through, just not a guy to keep an eye on. Uh, yeah, in 11 healthy games last year, he averaged 307 yards per game, which last year would have been, uh, I think, would have been second uh, over over all quarterbacks. This year, it's a different story because the quarterback's thrown for a lot more yardage. But I think if Fitzpatrick could average borderline 350 to 400 yards per game, there's no reason why, you know, Jameis Winston in this offense can't do around the same. Uh, like Tyler touched on, you know, Fitzpatrick was the number one quarterback uh, in the league in this offense, you know, in the first uh, three weeks. So I think Jameis has really high upside. If I didn't have a quarterback, I would burn a waiver wire priority on him. I would spend a decent amount of fab. Going forward, I think he could le- legit be an every week starter. I think he could – potentially put up numbers close to what Fitzpatrick was putting up just because their defense is is not stopping anybody. Their running game is borderline non-existent. So those two recipes lead to a lot of pass attempts. This is a very vertical pass um passing vertical passing uh Team, they throw the ball downfield a lot with Deshaun Jackson, good win. There's a lot of yards in place to be made. I think he could, could potentially be a top eight the rest of the way. Top eight. I'll, I'll do a beer bet on the top eight if anyone top wants to take it. Eight. Oh, beer bets. Some beer bets. Well, I'm actually bet. pretty com- I'm pretty comfortable that Jameis Winston will be a top ten the rest of the way. Just due, like I said, lack of running I, game. I can see that. The offense. Uh, I mean, look what Fitzpatrick was doing. Fitzpatrick, yeah, he's had good moments to where he's been a, like a decent quarterback, but 
you know, he's also, you know, had some very bad moments over his career, and he was able to do that. And I think it's a product of more of the coordinator, the offense, the system, the weapons. Right. I don't think it was so much Fitz, Fitzpatrick. I mean, even against the Bears in one half, he still threw for 150, you know, yards with a very high – uh, completion percentage. So now getting a bye week to get his feet under him in Atlanta, I, I, he, I think he's a top eight play this week. And going forward, the schedule's pretty nice for them too. So, Yeah, yeah, I definitely like him. All right, so then uh, another quarterback that might be there, Baker Mayfield. Uh, how do you feel about him? Uh, I mean, through his first two starts, I mean, he's averaged 318 yards. This is full starts. I'm um, taking out the, the Jets game a little bit, but he still threw for 200 yards. And what was that, a half he came in for? Yeah, like a half. Um, this this is a little skewed, too, because they did go into overtime, but it's 318 yards, 1.5 touchdowns, 1.5 interceptions. I mean, it's not it's not the sexiest, but it's not the worst. You know, uh, he showed some playmaking ability. He's just, I think there's going to be some upside for sure. And what I like about Baker Mayfield is – the schedule going for the next five games. He has the Chargers, the Bucks, the Steelers, the Chiefs, and the Falcons. That is five games to where if you have a quarterback on a bye or you just need a bye week fill-in, I wouldn't be afraid to throw Baker Mayfield out there. If you if he shows another good showing against the Chargers and you have someone on a week a bye and you want to pick up Mayfield and start him and uh, see what happens. And he rushes a little bit too, so he kind of he braces his floor a little bit. But I think he's a good bye week filling quarterback based off his schedule. Yeah, that, that schedule right there you just said was money. So pretty easy, like you said, down the stretch. If you need to buy in, uh, fit, like fill in or taking a flyer on someone. I mean, grab him. Why not? He's gonna be number one overall pick. So I mean, he's obviously got the talent. That's probably the best five game schedule you can get for a quarterback. Yeah, it's juicy. <laughs> like so. if not, if not the best, it's probably top three at least. All right. Is there any other quarterbacks you guys want to talk about? Just those two, pretty much. That I, I nah, I mean, consensus will show names like Derek Carr, Flacco, and stuff like that. But I think those you have better quarterbacks. Those are, at this point, I'm, I don't think we need to discuss anyone else you're worth picking up. Yeah, for sure. Let's uh, let's move over to the uh, running back section. All Thank right. you, Tyler. I just got to say that. What? Oh. Well, thank you. you. you t- well, you talked about you talked about. <laughs> I'm just saying for the whole Eagles running back situation, you hella called that. And last week, I picked up Corey Clement in two leagues. So yeah, JJ. Uh, it's funny that this happened because like yeah, I was doing some research or I was playing an online poker tournament, or whatever. And we came in and I was telling you, bro, I just feel like a guy is gonna get hurt. He's just falling apart. Like I think we should just like stash Clement, Corey Clement. Like it's just I, I, I told you, I was like, I think I'm gonna stash Corey Clement in. All of my leagues, just in case something happens. <laughs> and then what happened? JGI torn ACL out for the year. Guess how many leagues I stashed Corey Clement in? Zero. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Guess how many times you turned off your phone? And I'm back. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Zero. So, yeah. But then, uh, yeah, I went to so I went to go look to see because I have the number one waiver priority in the league, and I'm like, oh, let me go see where Corey Clement is. Who has them? You do, Mike. <laughs> well, I am too in the, in the liquid league. Yeah. Dude, I fuck. So good, oh. good job, guys. Yo, we, hey, we collectively we, fuck this guy left and right. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't open your big mouth so much, bro. I'm just out here to help. I know. What's funny with the Jaya though is it wasn't his back, it wasn't his his knee where he's had issues at. It was his other knee that he ended up tearing. So it wasn't even an injury that like he was dealing with already. It was just kind of like ironic with that. Yeah. Um, but I have the the Philadelphia duo ahead of the Alfred Mo- Morris in my, in my personal rankings. Um, that's just because I think they're more of a long-term solution where I think Alfred Morris is more, as long as Breed is out, he's a little bit better of a play. Um, but we could touch on the Philly running backs first. Uh, so Corey Clement, Wendell Smallwood, who are you picking out of the yeah, two? Yeah, that's a good call. Uh, if it'd be me, I'd probably go Corey Clement over Smallwood. And if I had a number one priority, uh, I would definitely put it on Corey Clement. Uh, I'd probably spend a decent amount of fab on him too. The thing with this backfield is, is I feel like – it, no matter who it is, Corey Clement, Wendell Smallwood, you still got Sproles who's, who should, once he gets healthy, come back and have a role. This is still a full-blown running back by committee. So, yeah, I think Clement probably is the better talent. He's probably the most explosive one out of all three. But is he going to get majority of the snaps? Probably not. I, I, I personally, am just in my opinion, I feel like it's still going to be divvied out pretty evenly. Especially when Sproles comes back, that makes the mix even messier. So, I mean, it just, I mean, if you need a running back, you got to get him. I mean, running backs are, you know, they're hard to come by. So, it would probably go Clement and then Smallwood for me. But I still think it's going to be a committee. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be a committee. Uh, the, even, even with the Jai, it was still a committee. I mean, even if there's rumors of them trading for LeSean McCoy and Le'Veon Bell, I mean, if, it'd be interesting to see what happened if one of those two came over. 
um, to Philly, actually. But yeah, I think it's going to be a, a, a committee. Well, I mean, Wendell Smallwood's been a little bit more efficient this year so far, but it's such a small sample size. And, you know, it's different when you're the defense is keying in on someone else and you come in and make a play versus when you're the guys who are the defenses are kind of more preparing for. Um, I prefer Clement over Smallwood just because when I look back at the statistics, uh, as far as red zone uh, work, Clement has seen more red zone work than Smallwood has, and he's also the bigger back of the two. So in a workload where I see them both um, – Relatively the same in a, in a, in a carry volume-wise. The Eagles average 25 carries per game. So you could divvy those up, let's say, 10 and 10 roughly, you know, with maybe John Adams or Josh Adams, the third guy, getting one or two carries or a few carries. And the passing game work should be the same. So I feel like it's relatively the same between those two. But I'm going to choose the back that has the higher percentage of having the goal line work and scoring the touchdowns. This is a high-flying offense, and they could both on a weekly basis be flex RB2 because this is a good offense. And, I mean, what you see with the Patriots, for example, a better offense probably, but there can be two backs in a given week who can give you value. So I think this is an offense where you have two flex plays in Smallwood and uh, Clement. And, you know, once Sproles come in, we'll see what happens. But as long as he's out, I think you can start both those guys as a flex play. Yeah, Clement available in 70% of the leagues. Smallwood available at 90% of the leagues. So they're definitely out there, except for the leagues that I play. They're not out there. <laughs> Actually, if you're in the NFL app, so there's there's a little bit of a glitch. I'm going to share it with some people. If... Uh, so I had a Ty Montgomery. This is how I used the glitch. Actually, I'll I'll explain it. You can like pull people out. Yeah, I had Ty Montgomery Dude. because I was holding him to flex him. Had Devonte Adams, John Will Allison, and Randall Cobb all been out. Now the game started. And I was like, okay, well, Ty Montgomery, I'm not starting him. The game started. I dropped him. Corey Clement was in the later game, so I went ahead and picked up Corey Clement, slid him into my bench spot, and then JHI had the injury. So if you're in the NFL leagues, uh, if you have an extra bench spot or two, you can pick up and drop these guys and pick up handcuffs throughout the matchups as they go. It's a little bit of a glitch that I've Wait, learned. So you can pick you, – you picked – so through the, the 10 o'clock games, I had Ty Montgomery because I was considering flexing him had all the receivers been out. But Devontae Adams played, so I didn't want to start him. So I dropped Ty Montgomery once the game started. It was like the third quarter when I dropped him. Yeah. And then I knew that Corey Clement was playing later at the 1 o'clock games. So yeah, I was like, yeah, let me pick yeah. up Corey Clement and stash him on my bench instead. And it ended up paying dividends because J.H.I. got hurt. Yeah, but you can use that, and if you have a, a roster spot or two in the NFL.com leagues, and use that to your advantage, and just kind of basically handcuff throughout the day. I did that with a kicker. I did that with a kicker last year in the NFL app. I swear he was in my lineup, and I'm in like week one, and I pulled him out of my lineup because yeah. he, he I had Janikowski, and he didn't play week one. I pull, yeah, the NFL app is sketchy. As I hell. hate the NFL app. Yeah, it's terrible. So if you're <laughs> the on NFL there, get better. You know what I'm saying? Even just when you're trying to fab and bid and all that stuff, it's kind of it's annoying. But yeah. Um, all right, so let's move on to the other running back. So Alfred Morris, available in fifty percent of leagues. Uh Brita just keeps getting banged up every week, it seems like. He, you know, every week I on my sleeper bot app, I get an alert. It isn't you know, it goes off and it's like Brita helped off of the field. Next week doesn't Brita, look good. <laughs> non contact drill. Next week. Brita just being carted off the you know <laughs> It's just every week he's getting beat up, and it's like, is he going to sustain it through the whole year? I mean, uh, obviously he looks way better than Alfred Morris. He's younger, he, you know, he's better shape. He's just he's just quicker, faster. You know, catches the ball, everything. He's just he's better than Morris, but he just can't stay healthy. And I guess like you know, our boy Andre says, what's the best ability? Availability. And if you ain't available, then it's like I can't play you. So that kind of leaves Morris there. So uh, what do you think? What do you thinking on him? Yeah, Burita, funny thing about Brita is like he he the sleeper bot either tells you that he's dead or when you watch the game he looks like he dies in the game. There's five trainers, he's rolling around the floor. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit Matt I mean, Brita, I, more I, like Matt beat up. All right, anyways, <laughs> and you guys wanted to fire me from the podcast. <laughs> That's what. I, <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, you made me forget what I was saying. That that was that was worse than my jokes on the last episodes. <laughs> Bro, this dude was like, he's like <laughs> Philip Rivers. He's been flowing passing yards. He's been flowing. <laughs> he's like making all these like like he's I don't know, dude. Um, but yeah, Alfred Morris. I think you got to own him and hold him at this point. Uh, like you said, Breed is just someone who seems to get nicked and banged up. And there's guys like that. Uh, in this matchup, he does play the Packers going forward, but there should be a heavy volume because I don't think Breed is going to play in this matchup. If he does make it out there, then I'd fade Morris. 
But if he's not out there, he's going to see all the work, the goal line work. He's still getting some passing game looks. So if you're in PPR, his floor should be decent. Yeah, three for 30 last week. Yeah, and then that's a, that's a product of C.J. Beathard. Uh, he does sort of the running backs a, a, a lot. He, he So if there's no burrito, I think he should still see around three to four targets out of the backfield. And he's going to get majority of the carries this week. So good one-week play. Burrito might be back going forward. When Burrito's there, I don't really like Morris too much. Just because I don't think this is a very good offense and he's in a timeshare and Burita's the better back of the two uh, up to this point. So if, I, if you need a one-week play, for sure, I would probably grab Morris over the two. Like if you just need someone for this week, you're deep, you have a couple running backs in a bind, you need a one-week and you don't really care about long-term, then I would maybe prioritize Morris over the other two. But if you're thinking more long-term, then I would go with Clement or Smallwood. As, yeah. as the backs. Yeah, for sure. I'm not sure what Breed's injury was, but I read on something that could be a high ankle sprain. And high ankle sprains usually are a couple weeks, two to three, four weeks, you know, some of that time frame. So if it is a high ankle sprain, definitely grab Morris. Uh, I mean, I'm thinking Alfred Morris should be owned in every league just because yeah. the fact that Breed is just one hit away, one step away, whatever, one breath away from being one on the IR. Away. You know, every week he's just getting hurt. So, I mean, for to give an example, let's just say he goes down and he's out for the year, then. I think Morris is, you know, full, you know, fifteen to twenty plus is touched every week, you know. Yeah, they did give that. What's his name? CJ or not CJ? The Mozart Mozart guy, a little uh, bit of work. Yeah, uh, a, a sneaky running back that would be Kyle Uzcheck, the fullback. I think he's more of like if Breida was down for good, then he might actually turn into like you know more of the passing kind of guy. Yeah, I agree with so, that. Just That's, a name to keep an eye on, Kyle Uzcheck. If you're in a deep deep league, yeah, if something happens to Breida, I think Uzcheck would get more. It's hard to like. It's hard for someone to like. You know they're 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 practicing with Burita and Morris and stuff like this, and use check isn't necessarily a part of the game plan. But if something were to happen, Burita, I think use check would be more game scripted into it during the week, so you'd see the results in the week. Uh, we can move on to the next one. Uh, Ronald Jones, Mike Davis. We could discuss those two. Uh, who do you want to start with, Ronald Jones? I mean, Ronald Jones. I guess if you want to grab him and stash him, go for it. Me personally, I still think that there's they just can't run the ball and they're gonna throw they're gonna be throwing the ball they're gonna be behind a lot in the games. Like we just talked about Winston. The game script's gonna be they're behind a lot in majority of the games. So he can't catch. I mean he's like a human dodgeball player out there, you know, dodgeball, you're out. He's just getting tacked with a ball right in the chest and he can't even catch it. He's not like Michel. Yeah, so I don't necessarily know if I would grab him and play him. Maybe you start him. I don't think Peyton Barber goes anywhere. Even even if he's playing bad and he's not, you know, performing up to you know what they want i still don't think ronald jones just runs away with that job so this would still turn to like a running back by committee for me on a bad running offense you know because this is obviously a passing offense so if you want to grab him stash him go ahead me personally i wouldn't i just wouldn't want anything to do with this backfield yeah see the one thing to hang your hat on i guess would be uh, peyton barber's been bad the bucks actually do while there is a chance for committee the bucks do when they have a running back they do give him majority of the work they kind of don't really use uh, a committee approach. They're one of those f- the few teams left. I think that's why people were high on Ronald Jones coming into the season because they're one of the few teams left that will give their starter or whoever they assume to be the starter a ton of carries volumes. Like you said, he can't catch. The ball just hits him in the face, the chest, the, the ankle. I don't even know. Um, <laughs> but if you do, he was a big play guy coming out of college, and they do need some spark. So if he can get on the field and maybe break off a 25-yard run here, a 30-yard run here, and then a one-yard, one-yard, two-yard, one-yard, whatever, uh, that's kind of what you're hoping for is he starts making some big plays, and they're just like, hey, we can't run the ball. But when we hand it off, at least Ronald Jones has the potential to break a 70-yard touchdown run. So we're going we're gonna to ground and pound it with him because he has that spark that uh, Peyton Barber does. So that's like your one kind of thing you're hoping to see. So – I don't think you're starting him, but you know if he can make some big plays in a given week, and Atlanta's a team to not a very good defense, maybe it happens. You know, maybe you get a a, a flex play RB two potential upside out of Jones going forward in the future. Uh, uh, we can move on to Mike Davis. Uh, Twelve carries in this last game. He seems to be getting the goal line work out of the backs. And Seattle, uh, for as crappy as their run offense was last year, and over the first few games, the last three games their rushing offense just kind of came to life so yeah uh, I mean, for me for the whole mike davis situation he kind of just takes over what we all thought rashad penny would be so like i mean rashad penny you're thinking he's there he's gonna get some run chris carson's kind of the lead dog there but we all we thought you know rashad penny was gonna get some touches here and there so i feel like they mike davis and penny just kind of switched and it just but it doesn't really change anything i'm not really feeling confident throwing mike davis into my lineup 
maybe grab him because I guess if Chris Carson goes down, then maybe you know obviously they showed once Chris Carson was out that you know they're willing to give Mike Davis tw- the ball twenty plus times. But he's not a guy who I'm going to grab and try to throw in my line and put away just because, like I said, I feel like he is what we thought Rashad Penny would be at the beginning of the year, which is like, you know, a handcuff or a stash, not someone who's you're necessarily going to throw into your lineup. Yeah, I mean, if you're in a standard, he might be a little bit better of a grab because I said he's he seems to be the goal line back and he's converted three touchdowns in the last two games, so potentially going forward he might be the red zone goal line back so standard leagues he might be a little bit better of an ad uh these guys are kind of where i'd be rather starting receivers over these guys instead of trying to like uh just gamble with these running backs but uh, the running backs it's it's kind of ugly at landscape after the top you know 15 16 17 guys uh the next guy we have that's kind of only worth considering would be latavius murray as long as cooks out i think he's rosterable but you know if you're the cook owner it doesn't hurt to have murray as a handcuff but that's another lackluster uh, running game. He doesn't offer much upside in the passing game. He might catch two or three, but there's not much upside there. And and between the tackles, he's not doing much. So he's basically just a volume play with with Cook off the field. Yeah, for sure. So just a couple running backs I was looking that are still available out there. I mean, typically, you know, websites or other things will do 50% or less or 50% or more that are available. These are just running backs that are available in general that should be owned. You know, so if you're hurting, go look for him. Uh, Austin Eckler, available in 35% of leagues. I mean, this guy is putting up numbers every week. Like I said, we're talking about he just has a nose for end zone. I think he had like a 30-yard touchdown screen pass or something like that. I think I would sell high in him if I had him, though. Yeah, I mean, but I'm just saying he's out there, yeah, yeah, so yeah. go grab I'm him. I'm just a uh, side note I mean, if you a, have a, him. A, a flex guy, at least. You know, Naheem yeah. Hines, who's turned into a PPR machine. You know, he's that Sproles type of role in that uh, that Colts offense that where Andrew looks on 50, 60 times a game. Available in 55% of leagues. Javaris Buck Allen, available in 50% of leagues. He's actually running double the routes than Alex Collins. He's getting a lot of goal line work. Uh, I think he has, in PPR leagues-wise, he has 10-plus points in four of the five games. He's available in 50% of leagues. Like, just, it's not a sexy name, but I mean, he's putting up 10-plus points. Go get him. Uh, there's a couple other players. Carryon Johnson, Chris Carson, and Isaiah Crowell. 20% available, all three of them. So just keep an eye out for these players oh, if they're there. Cool. I mean, I feel like all those players right there I would go out and grab. You know, if, if they're available, for sure. The, uh, Crow would be another sell high for me if I had him. Crow pisses me off. He's, he's like, he's we like the Amari Cooper of the running backs. Bro, we were he looking, really at, we were looking really at his is. numbers. It's like it's like 22, 8. It'll be, and then it'll be like 29, fucking 2. He, he had, he's had three good games. Uh, you know, two touchdowns in, in two separate times in the game. And then he had this crazy game where he had 200 yards. The one game against the Jaguars, he only had the ball four or five times. So, and they were getting smacked. So, and, and when they're down, obviously, uh, Powell is the pass catching back, you know. So, he got more run than Crowell. That's just a game script one right there. I feel like in other games where they're winning, Crowell's going to be on the field at least 50% of the time. And he's they, they've proven that he's the goal line back there. So, when they get close, he's the goal line back. And he looks good, actually. Like, I mean, if you saw him running in this last game against the Broncos, like, he looks good. Like, he's he's not running like... I mean, I don't know. Like a little, like for like example, like Latavius Murray. Like he doesn't look good when he's running. He's just running and he's just like plundering. You know, like Isaiah right, Crowell right. looks like a running back. He's right, finding right. the holes. He's right. hitting the gaps. He's running people over. Like he's making people miss. He looks good. So I mean, and if something was to happen to Powell, like let's just say for I mean, like every player is one hit away, one step away from getting hurt in the NFL. If something happened to Powell and he went down and he was out for the year, I think Crowell would easily be like a solid RB two, like the, for the rest of the year, because he'd get twenty plus carries. You know. Yeah, yeah. Just looking at their schedule, though, they do have a somewhat. They play the Colts next week at home, some uh, decent matchup. But then they play the Vikings and Bears, two games where I don't know if I'd feel comfortable starting in either of those. Um, you know, then he goes to Miami and the Bills, so decent matchups there. The Patriots and Titans, some decent. So he's gonna have some decent matchups. Uh, just good to have as a depth guy. I mean, I'm not saying throw him in there. Yeah, you know, so, depth but guy. But good guy. I, I, I mean, want her to see what obviously, you can get. Obviously, when he has a good matchup, he has the potential to boom for 20 points. So, I mean, if it's a game where they're playing, you know, and, and you know that they got they have, the game script could be them winning or leading, you know, he's going to see the majority of the carries, the goal line work. And he's saying if the potential's there, you know, maybe you got some hurt, bye week, play guys, you know. So yeah, I would try and sell high on him though right now personally. Sure, yeah. If I had the chance, like uh, yeah, I would too, yeah. Look, find someone who looks at the points and doesn't look at like um, just like total work and ups and downs. As we see, so Crowell thirty five points, and you know he'll see some of those big ones and try and sell him for a little bit more of a consistent uh, back if I could. Yeah. Same with Eckler. You know he's had 
his touches haven't been very high, and what he's done with his touches is almost unsustainable. Um, so he's someone where I'd find someone who looks at the box scores and, and sees that, oh, his points are this, 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 and this, and see if I can get someone because there's going to be some regression coming with Austin Eckler. You know, if he doesn't get into the end zone every week, you're going to have like some games where he's a five or a six. So he's someone – I'm just trying to give some sell-high targets right now for people while we're in this episode because we haven't really done too many episodes with that for yeah. sure. <clears throat> All right, well, let's jump into the receivers then. So uh, Kiki Cutie. Just balling out again. Two games, back-to-back 10-plus games. Uh, six for 51 and then a touchdown on seven targets. So, I mean, obviously they're using him. Two games he's been there. He's gotten uh, a ton of targets. You know, they're using him all, all over the field, running the ball, screens, like show, you know, show passes, you know, deep passes, whatever. They're using him all over the place. So he's available in 80% of the leagues. Uh, Will Fuller, he, he's always battling some type of injury, hamstring, I don't know, any kind of injury. He's always he's always battling some type of injury. If Wolf Fuller's out, I think Kiki Cutie's value just, like, skyrockets because DeAndre Hopkins can't catch every target, can he? But can uh, he? De- he might. <laughs> he might. <laughs> bro, he might double spin yeah. move he, he all good. the way to he, the he's, he caught it, bro, and he was just like, B-button, 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 B-button. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, look, it did look silly. But <laughs> hey, bro, that's good for him, man. He's he's good. But yeah, Kiki Cutie, so available in eighty percent of the leagues. Uh, definitely go grab him and just and you know, hold on to him. He, he's you know, right now. He's obviously a, he's a flex play. Like I said, back to back games where he's got ten plus points. So I'm pissed that Hopkins did pretty well because I've been trying to trade for him for you know that trade I've been yeah. trying to put in. Just being seen. Actually, speaking of Bilo, 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 uh, I might actually. I'm someone who's going to probably try and buy low and Will Fuller. <laughs> Uh, you know, the hamstring issue, the two for 15, uh, you know, four for 49 with the emergence of Kiki Cutie in the week before. I think there might be some owners who are panicking. And if you're a deeper receiver and you can hold off for a week or two, um, or if you have a lot of options, I think he's someone that can, if he can get right, can pay dividends down the stretch. I like for it. Sure. All right, so Robbie Anderson, available in 60% of leagues. I feel like a lot of people are going to want to run out and jump and grab him. And, I mean, I guess if you want to hold on to him and get him, go cool. But, I mean, he only had three targets. Or three catches or yeah. something like that. And two of them just happened to go for forty plus yard touchdowns. So that's just unsustainable. You can't you can't expect him to go out there and catch I mean, week one he had one catch on one target for fifty yards and a touchdown. So it's like he that's obviously what he is. He's just kind of like a long ball guy. Uh a new one in this game, he got zero points, zero catches. So he was dealing with a hand issue, I believe. He was dealing some with sort. some type of issue, but I mean that's kinda of why Anderson probably got more targets than he normally would have. I knew was out, and I knew was been Sam Darnold's go-to guy. So I'm I'm not sold on Robbie Anderson. I think he's got the talent. It's just more about the quarterback player and like the volume. Is he going to get the the targets? I mean, it seems like no because you know he's his guy is a new one, not Robbie Anderson. I think he's a decent uh, speculative ad. Um, you know, Nunoa. Yeah, there was there was an issue there, but it's a it's a rookie quarterback. You know, maybe he maybe this was like a a chemistry building uh, something they can build off of with. Uh, with each other going forward. He made some big plays. Maybe there's some trust. Uh, maybe he just feels more comfortable going down the field in the future. You know, uh, so he's someone where if deep leagues see, and maybe you can add him and see what happens. If, it, if, if you see a week where, like you said, the targets have been low, they really have. But this was basically Crowell like, just running all over the Broncos, and they didn't really need to throw the ball much. Now they play the Colts next week. So, you know, maybe add him if you have a deep bench. The short benches, I don't think you should add him. But if you have a deep bench, if you're eight-man, uh, maybe nine men, whatever. See what happens. Uh, play the Colts. We'll see what happens. You know, maybe he has another uh, decent target game. Maybe his targets show up to six or seven. But there's a lot of deep air yards, so it could make him somewhat valuable in a standard format. So he's kind of just a guy where in deep bench, okay, but short bench, I'm not like Tyler. So there's not enough volume yet for a short bench for me to add him. But in a deep bench, you know, I could consider it for sure. Yeah. All right. So uh, who else that's available? Ronald Allison. If he's there because he got concussed and someone dropped him to pick him up, I mean, he's he's been double-digit points every week when he's been on the field. Yeah, 45% available at Geronimo Allison. So let's just jump on the guy who kind of took over for him, uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, or MVS is what we've been calling him. Seven for 68 and a touchdown. So, I mean, this guy's just like a freak athlete. He's like 6'4", 6'5", runs like a 4'4", 40. Uh, just, you know, big guy, blazing fast. Kind of has like a Robbie Anderson frame. Just a big, tall guy, super fast, super long and lanky. Uh, I mean, his value is kind of tied to if Cobb or Allison's hurt. Uh, Allison should be back. Cobb's the one who kind of worries me. If if he's hurt, you know, long term, or he, he, you know, he's been banged up for the last couple of years. He can't just seem to stay healthy. 
then Mar- Marquez Valdez Scanlings is definitely a guy who I think has some value, especially you know when Aaron Ro- Aaron Rodgers is throwing you the ball, they definitely get some value there. They've been lining up lining him up in the slot a lot too uh, since Cobb's been out, so that's just you know you know easier quick passes right there. The, the slot guys ten- tend to uh, aren't really the best corners in the league, so. This guy who's like six four, six five. Just a guy to keep an eye on. Marcus Valdez Scanling. I can't fucking talk right now. Yeah, it's it's, it's a name. It's, it's a name to know. Oh, I, sound, I sound like Mike over here. <laughs> I think his, his sinuses are getting to uh, him. That's sinus. Uh, yeah, he's in a good name to know. Uh, his value is tight. If Cobb and Allison are out again this week, you know he's a good, he's a good guy. You could feel comfortable uh, starting in a matchup. They play the 49ers on Monday night, so that's a good matchup to where you could feel comfortable playing him. We touched on uh, Allison, Kiki Cutie, um, who was that? Mohamed Sanu is someone or a deeper league. Uh, he's been actually seeing more targets and has been on the field more than Calvin Ridley. And this is a Falcons defense to where, I mean, the, look again last week, the Steelers just moved the ball down the field on them. So he's someone to where by week fill-in uh, ty- type of deeper leagues. You could pick up Sanu. He is on the field a lot and still sees targets. So, And he's had he showed potential to have some boom weeks. So yeah, He's available in 45% of leagues. So let's uh, t- touch on the Colts wide receivers because T.Y., he might be out again. So And obviously, if Andrew Luck's dropping back 50, 60 times a game, he's got to throw the ball to someone. He's going to throw it to Eric Ebron. And yeah, I mean, Eric Ebron's getting like 15 targets. Uh, Naheem Hines is getting like 15 targets. So that still leaves 30 targets to go for the receivers. So <laughs> Ryan Grant and Chester Rogers, are you, are you picking up either one of these guys? Ever since I said I don't think Luck's going to drop back 60 times, he's been like, fuck you, I'm going to yeah. drop back 60 yeah. Hold times. Hold my beer. Just because he said that. because <laughs> they're always behind. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they're like garbage. Yeah, I think they're more tied to like you said. If if Ty is out, then you could you could take a shot on them. They they play the Jets this week, so I think this is a more competitive game. So I would see his attempts possibly coming down a little bit. I don't think this is a game <laughs> where bold they, statement about <laughs> to, to fifty two <laughs> instead of sixty. <laughs> yeah, uh, but. Uh, it's going to be hard for me to trust any one of those guys in any of my lineups personally if I'm if I have them because I just see as more of like he's going to lean on the tight ends, running backs and he's going to spread it out to the receivers and whoever's open. So any given week I don't know if there's a true one outside of TY there. So it's just hard for me to trust one of those guys. Yeah, I think in standard I'm not really trusting either one of these guys. Uh half point and full PPR. I think I'd actually lean Chester Rogers over Ryan Grant just because uh Rogers has eight catches in the last two games. So Obviously, he's starting to build a rapport with with Luck, and uh, I could be wrong, but I think he lines up in the slot. So I mean, slot guys tend to have a really good games against the Jets. Think of uh, Emmanuel Sanders, uh, D.D. Westbrook two weeks ago against the Jets. So yeah, the Jets struggle against uh, covering the slot wide receiver. So uh, we'll look more into that. But if Chester Rogers is the slot guy there, then he's the guy who I would prefer over there, just because he has a good matchup. And like I said, eight plus re- or eight receptions in the last two games. Bro, so smart. So smart. Uh, so we just piggyback that into uh, the tight ends. Uh, yeah, well, just sure. a couple of the guys I just want to touch on, too, that are still available that should be owned. Uh, Tyler Lockett, it's, he's been catching a touchdown every week, it seems like. Uh, 30% available. John Brown, he, another guy who seems to be catching a touchdown every game. I think he had a bad game last week, but it's a tough division game in Cleveland. Uh, they were on the road. Yeah, but John I think Brown, he had 12 or 13 targets yeah, in the John, game still. He's available in 30% of leagues. Jordy Nelson, available in 30% of leagues. I mean, if, if Amari Cooper's going to be so boom or bust, or maybe you just do it to where if you see Amari Cooper's going to be going against one of these like top-tier elite corners, you know he tends to struggle against those guys. Those should be weeks where Jordy Nelson typically has a bigger role and steps up more targets because Amari Cooper only gets one target when he plays against better corners. So... 30% available, all three of those guys. So just, I mean, just names to keep an eye on because these guys should be rostered. Keep a lookout. Keep, keep a lookout. All right, we can make the tight ends kind of – I think there's only really two or three tight end names uh, really looking at. Uh, Cameron Brait, O.J. Howard is expected to be out, and Brait and Winston just have like a – they have a connection. They're boys. They – when, when Brait's on the field – I almost want to say at least 50% of the time uh, Jameis Winston's thrown a touchdown to him when it's those two uh, on the field. And no O.J. Howard, I think there's a decent chance he gets into the end zone. Uh, a good option at least for this week and maybe weeks going forward because they play the Falcons this week. So Cameron Brake would probably be my, my number one tight end pickup. Uh, this, as ugly as it is, he offers high upside and double-digit touchdown upside too because he's done it before multiple weeks where he scores multiple yeah. times in a game. Yeah, Cameron Bray is one of the best red zone tight ends in the league. Uh, available in 80%. Like you said, if O.J. Howard's out for this week, for sure, 
uh, game scripts should be a shootout. Should be a ton of points going in this game. And like I said, the, Winston's always looking for Bray. So for sure, go grab him. Uh, another player, just kind of a deep dive we're looking at. I think his name, I think he pronounced it Jeff. Geo. What is his it, name? It says Geo, but I think it's pronounced Jeff. My name is Geo. Jeff Swamp. So <laughs> wait, wait, wait. How does it spell? G E O F F. Yeah, that's Jeff, dude. His name is Jill. Bro, you've never <laughs> seen someone spell their name like that? That's no, Jeff. why would you do that? No. When you guys were on the last <laughs> podcast, Anthony said Gio. Gio, <laughs> my name is Gio. Well, my name is Gio. I must not have been go, go, was, go, Someone Google his, his name pr- pronunciation. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. definitely yeah. Jeff. You guys it's are definitely Gio. Dude, I, went, I, I was in like. His name is Jeff. His name I was is like Jeff. in kindergarten with a kid. His name, his name was G. Bro, that's why you're the fucking scientist, bro. We got you fucking here, bro, because we don't we don't know that stuff, bro. We just look up these numbers and stats, but you you know the pronunciations and shit. We used to call them Gio. Pronouns. Anyways, Jeff Swam, the. That's it's tight end. It's Geoff. Geoff? I'm just making that up. Geoff, Geoff. <laughs> All right. Sh- the oh, Swamp. Just assassinating this guy. Anyways. Anyways. We just call the Swamp. this guy's name up. Chopping him up like. Tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. So he, he's he been on the field for 90 plus percent of the snaps every single game. Uh, it's crazy status. I looked on him. the last For the last three weeks in PPR, he's the tight end nine. And in standard, he's the tight end nine in the last three weeks. So he's gone for five for 47. Three for thirty nine and a touchdown, and then three for fifty five. So, uh, PPR wise points that's nine point seven, uh, twelve point nine, and eight point five. So, it's pretty hard to find, you know, a tight end on the waiver wire that you can just pick up and throw in your lineup and get some points. I mean, look at like Austin Safari Jenkins, zero points. Ricky Seals Jones, zero points. I mean, you're Ben Watson. I don't think he did much last night, right? It's just so uh, so hard to find nah. these these tight ends. You know, here's a guy who's. You know, getting not he's on he's not leaving the field. He's on the field every fucking play. And obviously, Jason Witt, uh, Jason Witten's gone. Dak, you know that you know love throwing the ball to Witten. That was kind of like his security blanket. So all those targets are gone. You're looking at like 80, 90, 100 plus targets gone. You know, and then all the targets with, with Dez are gone. Th- there's no real receiver there that has that has emerged as a true weapon. I mean, he's kind of spreading the ball around everywhere. So Swamp seems like a guy where pick him up, and he's starting to build that rapport with. Uh, with uh, Dak Prescott, and I mean, like I said, he's in the last three weeks he's tied in nine. So pick him up, just a guy to got to keep an eye on, bro. Yeah, apparently it's according to Google, it's, it's actually Jeff. 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 His Jeff. name is okay. So we've decided this. his name is Jeff. <laughs> My name is. <laughs> you guys are so stupid. <laughs> I'm gonna go Geoff. 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 You know what that sounds like? Have you ever played Super Smash Brothers? No. Well, obviously you guys have. Okay, but you know in Super Smash Brothers? No, I haven't. Okay, Anthony. Don't be that <laughs> fucking guy. Go put a hoodie on. Come back and we'll tell you about Super Smash Brothers. You know when it sounds like a, you know when Roy or what was it? Martin when he would do that. Get off. It's like I think it was Martin. Throw- Marth, Marth, Marth. I call him Martin. But I've never Jesus played it. I've never Christ. played it. Yeah, yeah. He knows the name but he's never played. You never played Super Smash Brothers. I just I just I just used to watch <laughs> I, was, I was a spectator. I know. You said, I wasn't watch allowed to play Twitch live stream. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> just watch Nico play. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a couple of the tight ends. Uh, Greg Olson's expected to be back. I think this week. Uh, so I was just looking to see if he was available in any of my leagues. He's not, but he's available in forty percent of leagues. So, I mean, the tight end position is so thin. Once he comes back, there, there's a chance that he his foot is fucked up, and like they're saying, like the chances that he reaggravates it and it breaks again is like really high. It's like almost fifty percent. They say. Yeah. So I mean, but if he's gonna be out there playing, you might as well throw him out there. He's like I said, he's better than these guys. Ricky Seals Jones, Austin Safari Jenkins is hurt. I mean, Ben Watson. I mean, there's just there's not many good tight ends out there. So available in forty percent of leagues. Check your waiver wire. You know. Type in his name because because sometimes you'll go like to you'll look at the tight ends and like you'll be like oh like who's available and it'll show you like the tight ends available based on their projections but like he's obviously projected for zero yeah. points because he's not that playing. is a very good point you really so type his name in and then see you know when he comes up and see if he's available you really do need to slide down on <clears throat> on those uh, waiver wire when you go to pick up these guys for waiver wires like you really have to go down there because there's some guys I'm uh, I'll see them uh, once the waiver wires go through I'm like oh fuck this guy was available because they're way down there you yeah. really have to check that so, so you gotta yeah. go deep and down gotta go deep deep, deep and down look, look look deep up. dives bro get down there um, another Damn guy I don't know, think Tyler mentioned would be you gotta go deep and down on uh, would be Jack Doyle <laughs> Doyle <laughs> Jack Doyle 
Uh, the first the two weeks where he was healthy, 94% of the snaps, 97% of the snaps. So he was out snapping Eric Ebron. The first two weeks, Eric Ebron, 45%, 28%. Now I think both these guys will be on the field, but if Jack Doyle is out there, he was the starter. He was seeing more targets. Andrew Lux apparently going to throw the ball 60 times a game, so... When Jack Doyle's out there, I think he could potentially be a top 10 tight end, especially in PPR leagues, uh, volume-wise. He's someone where if you're thin in tight end, grab him, hold out the injury for another week or two, pick up some guys, because you could have an every week starter going forward once he's back. For sure, yeah. So another, another guy, too, just like I said, I'm always looking to see who's available and you know whatnot. So 30% available, David Njoku tied in for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, I mean, a lot of people drafted him, but then I think he wasn't – performing you know as the way people wanted to so they started dropping him uh so just a couple stats i was looking at with him when tyrod taylor was the quarterback he was only averaging 4.7 yards per catch so that's not very good and he he wasn't getting many targets either maybe five or something like that the last two weeks with baker mayfield seven seven targets and 11 targets and his yards per catch doubled to 11 yards per catch so he's i think got like five for 52 and then like six for 69 so just if he's out there, I would definitely go grab him. He's a guy who I'm kind of, you know, trying to trade for, you know, in some of the leagues that like I have. Maybe if I don't have a, such a good tight end, because obviously he's getting 10 plus, 11 plus yards per catch. Baker loves throwing it to the tight end. When he was in Oklahoma, he would target the tight end, Mark Andrews, all the time. And and like Anthony was just talking about earlier, Baker Mayfield's got a juicy ass schedule coming up. I mean, it's probably one of the softest, easiest schedules in the whole league. You know, if not the easiest schedule coming up. So mm, some deep. Deep just a, a name to keep on. Thirty percent available. And David and Joe. <laughs> so deep. So deep in here, bro. Oh, yeah. It's like to the base deep. <laughs> Do you ever? Uh, get All right, deep? let's let's uh let's, to the defense. Let's, let's talk about some street. Let's talk about some streaming defenses. This, this is arguably a make or break. It has saved me last week. I picked up Cincinnati's defense. Bengals. Oh. Picked up the Bengals defense. I got them myself. Did they have a great success with these guys. Yeah, very much a pint on my team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, so my first streaming option this week would probably be the Seahawks against uh, uh, the Raiders. That would probably be my top if they're still out there. Uh, they're only rostered in 25% of leagues. Derek Carr, he throws p- I don't think he has gone a game without throwing a pick yet. I think he's throwing a pick in every game. So Yeah, he's terrible. You're due for one pick. I don't... <laughs> He's only throwing the ball 10 yards, but he's managing to throw interceptions still. So, um, yeah, he just doesn't look good. He has he leads the, he leads the league. I'm just reading a stat right now. Leads the league with eight interceptions already. And this is Seahawks defense is actually low key. I thought they were going to be terrible, but they're actually playing pretty decent. The Seattle Seahawks defense. Oh, they got Shaquem Griffin, dog. Dog, for sure. Uh, so the streaming defense for me, I would uh, the one I like is the Texans are they're at home against the Buffalo Bills. So the Bills. Uh, have given up eight plus fantasy points to the opposing defense in four of the five games this year. So, if you're looking at a floor about eight points, I mean, they're obviously you can't score points. You know, you got Clowney and Watt coming off the edge, rushing a rookie quarterback who threw for only 82 yards last week. I mean, they have no real receiving threats. They have real no tight end threat. So it's like it's McCoy and that's it. So, Texans defense at home against Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, unless you're named the Minnesota Vikings, you're, you're starting against the Bills. Yeah. Uh, that's actually that's the one game where they didn't allow eight, eight <laughs> more points. <laughs> it was the Vikings. Uh, Green Bay Packers might not be a bad play either. They've been playing pretty decent on defense, and they go against C.J. Beathard uh, in a primetime game. So there's potential for um, some big plays against him. And you know, yeah, I like that one. Packers at home. It's it's, I mean, it's hard to go into Lambeau, especially Beathard. I mean, uh, that team is beat up. That that whole team is beat up. The Niners. So another one for me is the Ravens. I think uh, the Ravens. You know, they have this name of Ravens defense, Ravens defense. People think it's like, you know, you know, one of the best defenses in the league. They've actually underperformed terrible, uh, terribly this year. So I think they're available in like 40 or 50% of the leagues. Uh, pick them up. They're at Tennessee. Uh, I'm not impressed with Mariota. I'm not scared yeah. about him. I'm not scared about Derrick Henry and his one-point yard per carry. Uh, they, the Titans are just idiots. They, for some reason, don't want to throw the ball to Deion Lewis, like their best weapon in space. Yeah, They have no tight end. I mean, Corey Davis is there, but... The Ravens' secondary is actually one of the best in the league, so I think they'll, you know, contain him for the most part. Uh, so yeah, the Ravens' defense at Tennessee Titans, just streaming. And then like keep it. an eye on. Uh, Mike, do you want to talk about no, no. a kicker? Uh, no. Keep an eye on Greg. I keep an eye on Greg's early in this week. He, there's a chance he he comes back this week, and he was the number one kicker uh, last year. And this is the number one scoring offense once again. So uh, I, know, I know kickers are kind of whatever, but unfortunately, they can win or lose your week. 
So uh, keep an eye on Zerli, and if he's supposed to play this week and he's under waiver wire, he's someone I would grab and probably start over just about every kicker. For sure. Kicker knowledge. Kickers. All right, so yeah, make sure you put Kick those claims deep. in. They usually go through tonight at midnight, so put those in and uh, just keep an eye out. You know, see who people are dropping. You know, some people panic. They start dropping people. Like, yeah. and, and, you know, that's why most of these, you know, some of these players are available, and I can't believe they're still available. And if they, so if see, not, see who people are dropping, you know? If none of these players seem good to you, like you said, just sometimes I, I'll, I'm like, eh, I don't really, I don't need these guys. Let me just see who they drop, like you just said. Yeah. And I, and I won't even put a waiver claim in. I'll just wait until that thing comes in the morning and see what they dropped. Yeah. Get myself a little bit of, because you know, people, some people will do the, make the, don't make this mistake is listen to this and be like, oh, they told me to pick up Cameron Bray. And then you drop like, Someone like T. I don't know. So people do silly stuff. Just don't don't drop someone that you shouldn't be for a guy that's going to be only potential upside. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, dude? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Same brisky. You guys are brisky. <laughs> how did Bla- how did Blake Squirtles do? Uh, Was he like a Venusaur or a Squirtle? Blastoise. He's, he's like. <laughs> he's like he devolved. <laughs> <laughs> he's in the ball. He's, he's inside he's the poke. Back. He's back in the pokeball. <laughs> <laughs> he's like in someone's basement in a pokeball. <laughs> Hasn't been out for like forty years. <laughs> All right. All Let's right. Be- week five waivers. No, this is week six. Week six waivers. God, dude, do you even know what day it is? What day is it, dude? What day do you <laughs> go get yourself some you JS memes? Fun day, bro. What day do you think it is? Fun day. That's not a day, dude. It is. All for right, me. all right. Thank you for listening to Average Bros Podcast. Check us out on iTunes, the podcast app, Stitcher. Uh, give us a listen. Check us out on YouTube. We got full video format. You can see our beautiful, beautiful faces. The fact that we're all wearing hoodies except for Anthony because he's. There's only three of us. <laughs> we're all wearing hoodies, like I said, except for Anthony. <laughs> and I'm not wearing headphones either. Uh, yeah. So check Cooking. all that stuff out. Give us a rating. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Do all these things. Tell do what I say. Like us on Instagram, Average Bros underscore fantasy football. Go check all this stuff out. And that's it for today, guys. I appreciate you being there for us. You know what? I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs>